In this presentation, we show you how data from electronic health record was used to monitor effectiveness of medications after its release. We focus on the Vioxx medication. This presentation was organized by Professor Faro Kalemi. This presentation is based on an article by David Graham and colleagues published in Lancet in 2005. The objective of this study was to compare rofococcib, commonly known as Vioxx, with celococcib and other similar medications. Vioxx was prescribed for arthritis and several studies without case controls and smaller in size had suggested that it might be involved in sudden cardiac events. The study used data from Kaiser Permanente in California to assemble a cohort of all patients aged 18 to 84 years who were treated with the medication. The study included three years of data from January 1, 1999 to December 31, 2001. It included more than 2 million person years of follow-up. Among these patients, 8,143 cases had serious coronary heart disease, of which 2,210 or 27% died. Without this massive retrospective data, this study could not be done, or if it was done, could not be as convincing. The use of electronic health records enabled the comparative effectiveness of these medications. First, all individuals 18 to 85 years old who filled at least one prescription for celococcib or rofococcib were identified. Those with at least 12 months of health plan coverage before the date of that first prescription were entered into the cohort if they had no diagnosis of cancer, renal failure, liver failure, severe respiratory disease, organ transplantation, or HIV AIDS during the screening interval. The control group were matched. The study followed up the selected cohort members from this entry date until the end of the study period or until the occurrence of an acute myocardial infarction or death, whichever came first. The study outcomes included acute myocardial infarction as documented by the International Classification of Disease 9th Revision Clinical Modification Code 410 or acute myocardial infarction. Patients with code 411.1 or intermediate coronary syndrome were also included if laboratory documentation indicated presence of acute myocardial infarction. That is, the lab indicated that the patient had raised creatine kinase MB fraction or troponin 1. The study outcomes also included outpatient deaths if the underlying cause of death listed hypertensive heart disease, ischemic heart disease, conduction disorders, dysrhythmias, heart failure, atherosclerotic heart disease, sudden death, or death from an unknown cause. The organization of the study outcomes required access to both laboratory and claims data, both of which were available in the electronic health record. For the 365-day period before the index date, the study obtained data for potential risk factors from the claims data and from the prescribed medication list of the patients. The risk factors included cardiovascular admissions such as acute myocardial infarction, coronary revascularization, and other cardiac diseases including emergency room cardiac visits. The risk factors obtained from claims data also included outpatient diagnosis for tobacco use, outpatient diagnosis of alcohol abuse, non-cardiovascular admissions, same-day admission for medical procedures, and rheumatoid arthritis. In addition, the study used patients' prescriptions to risk rate the patient. These included cardiovascular prescriptions such as tyrosine diuretics, calcium channel blockers, anticoagulants, insulin, and other similar medications. The study also used hormone replacement therapy, oral prednisone, and anti-rheumatic drugs such as risk factors. Note that the collection of the study risk factors required access to both prescription and diagnosis data, both of which were available in the electronic health record. To control for potential differences in cardiovascular disease between 
study exposure groups, they study calculated their cardiovascular risk score for cases and controls. The score was estimated from a logistic regression of cardiac events on the risk factors identified from claims and prescription data. This score was then categorized into 10 values, with the lowest value representing patients with no diagnosed or treated cardiovascular disease, and the remaining 9 representing increasing risk. A risk score of 9 was 12 times more likely to have cardiac event than a patient with a risk score of 0. Controls and cases did differ from each other in significant ways. Rofococcib exposed cases were older, more likely to be women, to be treated by rheumatologists, and more likely to have used anticoagulants or oral predension and th than controls exposed to ibuprofen, naporexin, or a remote NSAID medication. Cardiovascular risk scores were significantly greater for controls treated with celecoxib than for those from all other groups, including rofococcib. When all current users of rofococcib were compared with remote users of NSAIDs medications, the risk of serious coronary heart disease was enhanced by 1.34 fold. Risk fell to 0.84 with celecoxib and rose a little with standard dose rofococcib. When all current users of rofococcib were compared with the current users of celecoxib, risk was increased 1.59 fold. Compared with remote use, risk of serious coronary heart disease was amplified with recent use of any NSAID, current use of nap naproxen, and current use of other. The conclusion this study arrived at was that the rofococcib increases the risk of serious coronary heart disease.